Hey, what's going on guys? Joe with OMGRC.com. So today, typically don't do anything on Sunday, but I figure I'm tinkering around with uh, the idea of this WL Toys 144-001. I figure I'd kind of share you, share some ideas with you guys if you're up, whatever. I know it's kind of early. Uh, I'm on East Coast here, so what is it? It's probably like 10 something right now, Eastern uh, AM. So here's my idea. So if you're watching this afterwards, throw some ideas out there as well. All right, so what do we got going on? I'm all tangled up as far as with my mic. Let's see here. All right, so first things first, go over the system a little bit. I'm going to do a, a proper video as far as not going to go over all the stuff that I'm doing right now or uh, in, the, in one of my videos. Hey, what's going on, Mr. Boy? Um, so yeah, in this video, I'm just gonna go over what I'm using right now, the Easy Run. This is a Hobbywing system that's in it. This is something that I do sell. What's up, RC Attic? <laughs> um, so yeah, got a micro servo here. Got a 5400 kV motor. I did a video yesterday too, so if you guys are watching it, uh, this is definitely new because I've been thinking about it a little bit more, and that way I can share some ideas with you guys, what I want to do, and then you can share some ideas as well to say, hey man, maybe try something like this, and I'm going to go over them here. So we've got the Easy Run 60 amp. Now this motor is only capable of 2S LiPo because it is a higher kV motor. Just kind of letting you guys know in regards to that. I'm only going to keep it stock 2S more or less. Anyhow, that was the whole idea. So I've already taken stuff out. You got the 550 motor, electronic speed controller, the old uh, micro servo that's in there, the 2S LiPo that comes with it. Now, let's go ahead and take this off so we can see that I've cleaned it all up in here. So you can see, basically got a nice clean canvas or you know slate to work with. So the idea is to, I have some ideas. One of them I was talking about yesterday was to put the electronic speed controller on top, right? This way we can still keep our battery underneath. It'll be a 2S LiPo, uh, but we won't have to do any kind of modifications to the chassis. So we can still slide in the LiPo as needed. No problems there. Or I have some other ideas to put the electronic uh, speed controller in the rear here. Then go ahead and take our... These are little brackets. I know it's going to be... I'm going to go ahead and put this on a tripod, I think, so it's not moving all around. Let's see here. Now we can get a nice clear image for you guys. I wish I could zoom up, I don't think I can. But okay, so we, but we can move this camera up a little bit, or I can move it, things closer to you. All right, so normally, yeah, as far as you can move the this is for the motor, as far as that goes. I'm not for the motor, but for the battery. So anyway, there's another one as well, which is right here. Will it fit on top where you put it before? Yeah, so it, it will fit there. Okay, so it will, but it won't without modifying it, right? So let's say if I did keep it here, I'll have to drill into the chassis, and then I can put my, my battery up towards the front, keeping this in the rear, and I will need to cut this little plastic piece here. If I do it here, what's gonna happen? Um, won't be the fan, obviously would have to modify the top of it because the fan can't get any cool air because it's gonna suffocate it by the body being on top of it like, like so. So one idea was to kind of cut this a little bit, slit here, slit here, a little slit there, pop this open and maybe try to make some kind of roof scoop possibly. I didn't really want to modify the body after kind of thinking about it a little bit more. I was like, I really want to keep it as stock as possible. So that's why I went with the electronic speed controller in the rear and just cutting out a little bit here. Now keep in mind too, because I'm doing, I'm ripping out all these electronics, uh, that means I got to get a different radio. I have to get, uh, I got a little receiver here as well. So I need to put a, have a place for that. But I already know where I'm going to put the receiver. I'm going to put it just on top of the uh, micro servo that I have. So that's going to go right on top. So as far I know it's going to be a mess, and it's maybe hard for you to kind of understand it all now that I've had it all taken apart. But just bear with me as far as like I'm trying to get the main components. But I can definitely put the servo or the receiver on top of the servo. No biggies on that one. 
that's no problem. The main thing is where I'm putting the electronic speed controller because that's going to define how much room I'm going to have for my battery placement. So I was doing thinking about that or if I put it on top here like I was going to do, uh, again, the only thing is, is that the motor wires are very, they're kind of stiff in a way and they'll want to come up taller. So let's, yeah, this is, I don't know how well this is going to go as far as going live with doing all this, but you see how long these wires are, right? So plugging these things in to the top here now becomes you're going to have to either bend the wires or get a 90 degree connection or just I'll resolder them so they will sit kind of on a 90 degree or make something to, uh, you know, make it all work. So that's one thing. But if I go ahead and I raise the body up, just that's a lot. <laughs> this is I would probably what I would probably do is flip the electronic speed controller around like so and if I see this is, let me see here it'll give me a little bit more room to, for the wires to be a little bit taller um, yeah it's one of those things where it's it's hard to show you guys when I'm recording it but if I made just the rear if I actually just had it jacked up a little bit taller because it would sit normally really low to the ground I mean it'd sit low like here you now it's kind of hard to interpret or whatever but if I raised it up, the body, then I could, I might have a little bit more clearance for, you know, without having to modify the body itself. Those are just kind of some things. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know what you kind of think. I'm probably going to go with, I don't know. I might put the electronic speed controller just right here because I'm going to have to cut, drill two holes on the chassis itself. And I'll just use a piece of paper that I have here, make a little template, drill the two holes out for the chassis. And, and the reason why is just so I can relocate the motor or the, the battery placement so I can just move it up towards the front. That would be probably what I'm going to do. And that's going to still allow me to, I'll put the electronic speed controller here. I'm going to cut out this little spot right here and trying to keep it all stock as possible without modifying it too much. That's my main objective is to go ahead and just keep it as simple as possible to do the upgrade especially if somebody else is wanting to do it as well and it's like oh you did this and you did that and everything else it might be kind of a pain in the butt to follow or you know again to each their own i mean this is if you have one of these and you're looking to put a brushless system in it you know maybe you go with a brushless system that doesn't have a fan on top of it you know i would say to put it on the chassis yeah, I mean, I'm assuming you're talking about the electronic speed control. I want to keep the center of gravity low. So, you know, I mean, this isn't heavy, but it's got a little bit of weight to it. So I would rather keep the electronic speed controller low in case of any kind of flips, any kind of collisions like that, then I'm not sacrificing like it hits the body and then it destroys my electronic speed controller. So if that's what you're meaning to, that's probably what I'm going to go with anyhow. And I was kind of thinking there's like these little vents that are here fake vents that are just sticker vents i might cut that out and that'll allow maybe a little bit of airflow in there something but it's going to have airflow from through here a little bit to go through it i'll have to check temps on it but i would say it's probably going to be okay you know just doing it that way and if i did open it up here that just any little bit of more airflow the better right so that's probably what i'm going to do because I was thinking about putting the body post, making it up a little bit taller. And I was like, I don't know what to do exactly. But I think my main thing is do it this way. So let's just say generically, we lay it all in here and say, okay, you're going to have your servo in here. You're going to have your electronic receiver in there. Uh, 60 amp uh, on cards like that shouldn't overheat. Yeah, I mean a 60 amp. Yeah, it shouldn't be any problems as far as when it comes to, I think it's Shmi. Uh, Fleming there. I would say that, yeah, I mean, a 60 amp electronic speed controller sitting right here. The airflow, it's not a lot of stress on the motor because it's a pretty light, well, it's pretty light, you know, compared to a 10 scale, which is what it's designed for in the first place. Uh, two wheels set up. So, yeah, they have it here suitable for a 10 scale. So, if we're putting this in a 14th scale, you know, we're packing a lot in it. I think it's going to be really cool and still, you still have room for my battery so kind of giving you that layout as well and see if i'm missing anything else and then of course the switch so then i can just mount the switch right on top of this little plate here and just call it a day and i'll just cut that 
and all as well. So that is my game plan with it. And of course, we got this long electronic speed controller wire. So plenty of, you know, got plenty of length to uh, put it onto the receiver itself. So I will be soldering in case some of you guys are uncomfortable with soldering or anything like that. You do not get your connections for this electronic speed controller. So you gotta ha you'd have to solder them. I'm gonna be using these XT60 connections on it. So I will be taking the connection off of this battery, the, the Dean or T-style connection, and go ahead and putting my XT60 connection that's on there. That's kind of what I'm going with, especially with this here. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So yeah, I will have a video of this up tomorrow. Now, um, I'm trying to work out if I'm going to do a video on putting this all in here, but I kind of showed you guys now, so I don't want to keep beating a dead horse over what I'm going to be doing. And that way you guys can see it run. This thing was running about stock. You guys, you know, all of it, your mileage or whatever, your speed's going to vary a little bit. But I, would get, I got it about 31 miles an hour with a bone stock. These are different tires that are on here, but 31 miles an hour, roughly right around there with a big GoPro sticking on the back of the wing. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see here. I think that's... I, Dolphy boy? I'm not sure. Kuwait. Wow, you live in Kuwait? That's cool, man. Oh, hello from Kevin from Iraq. Wow. What's up, man? Let me know what time is it where you're at? AM, PM? You know, that's cool. Appreciate you guys tuning in. So, man, from all over the place. That's cool. But it's a cool little car. It's a cool platform, anyhow. I do dig it, and that's why I wanted to actually just kind of share it with you guys, anyhow. So, to kind of get an idea. So, yeah, like I said, I'll go ahead and do a video, kind of putting it together a little bit, but without all the, uh, oh, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do this. I'm just going to go ahead. I'll do the video tomorrow. I'll have everything already cut mostly, and I'll be working on it today. Would you, oh, let's see, would a stock one be good for a beginner? Yeah, be, yeah, stock ones, man, it's awesome. A stock one for a beginner, absolutely. It does over 30 miles an hour. You'll be happy with it for sure. It handles really well. Uh, I have no gripes over it. Now, uh, the only thing I would say is that, yes, it does come with aluminum pieces and stuff like that, but is it really durable? I don't think it's super durable, and I would probably just say to go ahead and, um, you know, keep it. I keep mine on, on road. But yeah, I just want to let you guys know I gotta be, I'll be right back, so stay with me. Uh, take me only just a couple minutes, and I'll be right back, so just kind of hang tight there, guys. Sorry. Got to make a sale. All right, guys. Same time here. All right, let me go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, sales. <laughs> so I just want to... Let's see, what did I miss? What did I miss here? Okay, so... Cool. Okay, okay. it's 6.50 oh, p.m. Okay. Mr. Boy. Nice. Uh, same here. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, I definitely appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, I just, again, so apologize for me running away there for a second, but yeah, that's the game plan. So again, just kind of going over it real quick here. I will have a, a quick video because I know you guys want to see how fast it goes. That's the main thing. You're like, okay, you're doing all this stuff, but how fast does it go? How fast do we think? I don't know how fast it's going to go. I'm hoping it's going to go over 40 miles an hour once I get this system in here, but 
I don't know. I don't even know how fast. Uh, once I go ahead and put the battery in and see how the wheels expand, we're like, okay, this thing's going to rip. It's a 5,400 kV motor. It's got a big gear in there too. So it's almost, that gear ratio is pretty close. You know, they're pretty close to almost a one-to-one. -one. So it's going to rip. That's for sure. No doubt about that one. Just how fast. Yeah, I can't wait. So it should be, should be pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, anybody else want to leave any comments as far as after the fact too? You know, definitely, uh, definitely look them all up. Um, some people were asking, uh, y'all, yeah, live stream is your favorite. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, Ken R is your favorite WL Toys now? Um, the reason why I I, do, I focus on this one a little bit right now is because this one's super hot. A lot of the people liked it. And I want to give people some different ideas if they want to make it faster because a lot of people will buy these and like, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's someone that's starting in the hobby and like, oh, wow, you know, for under a hundred bucks, that's not bad at all. And maybe, or someone that's already been in the hobby for a little bit and wants to say, okay, well that, I mean, it goes like 30 something miles an hour. Well, I want to make it faster. So I want to give some people some ideas. I have a buddy that he's been watching and he's like, well, I want to see what yours does. And then if yours is pretty quick, I might just mimic the same exact thing and, uh, you know, to be cool. So I got some people that are cutting their, getting their eyes on there, just kind of checking it all out. I bought the same car. Let's see here, Ken. I bought the same car just waiting to get, get home. Okay, so you bought the same car just waiting to get home and try it. Okay. Yeah, uh, once you get home, man, you're going to be happy with it. I think it, it's really cool. I mean, if, you can't beat the price on it. That's the main thing. The price point is just phenomenal for what you get. Now, again, it, you know, the metals aren't the strongest, but I would say for the application, it's pretty good. I'm happy with it. I did make a, I did do a flip on it. The one flip I did in my video, it was captured, did a little slow-mo. It did bend the front brace here a little bit the shock tower. So I just bent it back. So this, that's again, you know, it's not a bashing type of vehicle. Anyhow, is this a good car to begin with? Um, I would say it's, I don't see why it wouldn't be a good car. It's quick, but it's stable. What I mean by stable too, is that it, it seems to be very well planted on the ground. So driving it, even though it's fast, you know, throttle control, you know, just don't give it full power. Um, all the time. Some people just want to are kind of trigger happy with some of it, but I think it's a good vehicle. Um, parts, as far as when it comes to, you know, getting replacement parts for it, you know, WL Toy sells the car so you can get them there. I know Banggood has some parts and then there's LC Racing, which is another company. I think from what I've seen, again, uh, people were saying that this is kind of a clone of an LC Racing car, whatever model they have. So uh, there might be some parts available as well for this car that fit on the LC Racing. Again, I haven't researched it enough to even give you guys like what part numbers or what. And what I looked at on Banggood, they're just getting a little bit more parts here and there. So again, this was just something that was sent to me from Banggood to do a review on, but I've kind of gone, I'm going above and beyond what they asked for at this point in time. This is done, you know, so uh, brushless system in it, but people want to go faster. So beginner car, I would say it's it's a good car. Why? Because you're not having to dump a bunch of money into it. Because it's already got bearings in here. Then, you know, the A95. If you're comparing the two, I'll do I always do comparisons with a, like a w, the other WL Toys A959, the B version, the little buggy. That one had bushings that wears all out. It's it didn't have uh, metal shocks. They're kind of very sensitive. The plastic strip out pretty easy on the the WL Toy one. That's the again the A959B. That one, I just think this is just above and beyond that vehicle. So spending a little bit more for this vehicle is definitely well worth it. I like it. I hadn't had any problems with it. So my experience has been very well, very good. I'm just getting into the hobby and following a lot of guys for information. Yeah, um, Walker, you know, that that's a good idea to do. You always want to do your research. Don't look at one person because they could be very biased on a, an RC car or what they do and they don't like. And everybody's going to have their own point of view. And it's good to take all that in, not just from one person. It's good to get a collective uh, information from all sorts of people. So I definitely like to do that when I'm looking for anything. 
you know, any RC car. Um, but if it's hobby grade stuff where you can replace parts, not so bad. But if there's not any upgrades for them, and there's definitely a defect that is a kind of known, then it's not, you know, not going to be a good car. But this one's definitely, I've had no issues with it. Some people were saying about like a, a slipper clutch in here. You know, it's got, it's got differentials in the front and in the rear. I'm not jumping it. So usually the slipper clutch, in my opinion, is for jumping. Why? Because when you jump and you come down, you land on the front two wheels, the power can go more towards the rear. Uh, that's why you have that center differential. So that way it transfers the power to the rear. That's why. Uh, for on-road, I don't really see it too much that I'm going to need it. I usually lock my differentials for on-road cars anyhow because they're just on-road. I'm not jumping them. So that's that. Let me see if I missed anything here. Let's see. The 895 Yes is a plastic gears and strips easy and the electric, electrics burn out easy but it's a good car. <laughs> okay. Yeah, James, as far as that one goes, my friend, I had one. I did some upgrades to it with the aluminum chassis because it was very, the, the whole system flexes, right? The plastic gears, they strip. I can tell you why they strip too. More than likely because the plastic chassis is, it's so flimsy. I showed it in one of my videos. If I twist the chassis, if you're jumping around and stuff like that, the chassis is going to flex, right? You got aluminum chassis here, you're not going to have all that flex. Or if you had a nice rigid plastic chassis, you wouldn't have that flex. And what happens with the A959B is it's got the plastic chassis. And if it twists a little bit, the separation from the gears happens. So your mesh becomes, instead of being nice and close to each other, when that chassis flex, they come, they come away. And what happens when that d happens, or what, what happens is uh, the gears will strip. They'll get too far away and they'll start chewing up. Yeah, you lose that mesh and they'll just, yeah, strip. Because I had people saying, oh, you need to upgrade to, you know, metal gears in the 8959B. And I was like, no, you don't. Not really. You shouldn't have to uh, unless it's just a bad uh, plastic or, you know, as far as the material. But it was the chassis that's just having the, a lot of the main issues. Again, and then the bushings with all bearings. It has bearings throughout the whole entire thing. Even the steering rack is all bearings in here. Very nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that, Walker, as far as you like my videos on the Red Cat Shredder. I'm looking into that car most. <coughs> Excuse me. I love that car. The Shredder is good. It's great price value as far as when it comes to 360 bucks, you know, U.S. I've beat the snot out of it and I haven't broken anything. But again, that's me. You might break something and that I didn't break. So... Yeah, uh, let's see. Appreciate that, Kevin. Keep up the good content. <laughs> Dinner time for me. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you stopping by, Kevin. So, yeah, I would say the Shredder, I mean, people, I had my own thoughts on the video and stuff like that. Uh, I have a Hobby Wing Max, oh, okay, the Max 10 short course truck. Uh, let's see here. This is Ace 88. What's up, man? Let's see, I have the Max 10 short course truck in my shredder in 19, okay, so a 19, 1920 KV, 19200, whatever, 19, yeah, sorry, I'm thinking of something else. Uh, okay, so that's not bad as far as the motor, so 1920 KV motor. The only thing is that I have to change the tires. Um, add this. Okay, so great point on that one, Ace 88, yes. Things that you want to do to the shredder anyhow is one i would say even if you left the motor the electronics alone and you just focused on the tires the tires aren't good i'll give it that right there they balloon they're not the best and if anybody's like oh i don't know what you're talking about as far as the shredder goes let me go ahead and show you so here's the shredder so this red one here this a one six scale and i I got my wires tied up, so it's kind of hard to move the cube. Okay, so you can kind of see a little bit here. Put it in perspective, maybe. Uh, eh. Anyway, you can see the other car. Like, that's a 110 scale. That's a 110 scale. These are 1 7th, 1 6th, not 1 7th. Anyway, this is a great vehicle. Um, I like it. I bash it, beat it up quite a bit. Yeah, the tires are horrible on it. It seems like they're glued to the edge of the tires inside the wheel. Yeah, they're just, they're bad. It does have like this faux beadlock that's on there too. It's got that. So they do balloon. They're not great. I've just kind of kept the tires. I did have some 
Arma Creighton version 3 6S tires, whatever, on it at one point in time, and they were really good. So tires are definitely something that you want to do to keep it more stable, and if you do that, you're going to have a blast with it because that's pretty much all anything I'm going to, I don't tinker with anything else on it. Are you going to upgrade, are you going to upgrade the video on it for good ideas? Uh, let's see here. Indonesia. Wow. Okay. I'm not sure how you say your name. Audrey? Audrey? I guess that's Audrey. Or Adri. Maybe Adri. I could be hacking that all up. But man, welcome. Um, so as far as the shredder goes, I don't know what I want to do with that one. Let's see, I have the Outcast. Okay, so Ace 88. I have the Outcast 6S tires on mine. Okay, cool. Um, the ones that look like they're regular Badlands. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely different tires on it. That's all. Other than that, I think it's it's a win vehicle. I like it. Um, I've done a few videos on it. People like the, seem that they keep liking watching it too. So I kind of make it, videos on it every so often. I've cracked the body on it and stuff like that. I've hit a mailbox with this thing, nonetheless. You know, it's got, you know, it's got some beat up on it, but it hasn't broken anything. And that wing, is, my gosh, it's got to be the most durable wing I've ever seen. It just, everything just twists and turns, and it just hasn't broken, and it's landed all crazy and everything. <laughs> so it's been crazy, man. It's been very durable. But, yeah, the spur gear in here, too. I would say metal spur gear is a must. So if you're going to get a shredder spur gear, and then it's debatable as far as to when you want to get tires for the vehicle. But out of the box, I mean, it'll be okay, but you're going to have ballooning and that kind of stuff. But they're not bad for bashing. You need better shocks, and it is very easy to work. It's very easy to work on. Uh, it's a limo, and it's very simple. There's not a lot going on inside the shredder. Maybe I'll do some other video on it. But, uh, you know, I've kind of it's kind of... I've done it quite a bit, and there's plenty of videos probably out there, but I know some people are like, oh, yeah, I've seen other people with videos, but they're always, they're either hating on it or whatever, and, you know, so I might do more videos on it. It's a great truck. That's why it's still hit, sitting here, even if it's hanging up. I like it. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, that's going to, I mean, it, and as far as the rest of it here with the WL Toys one, it, the reason why, again, I just think it's a great little vehicle for the price point. So if I can put a little bit more power into it, I'm happy. And that's what I'm going to do. Let's see, I had, let's see here. Oh, okay. Oh, let's see. Mr. Walker, I watch them every day. You watch them every day? If you, you're saying about my channel or Walker, are you talking about you watch every day? Let's see here. Okay, so Ace88, he has, okay, so he put... 5,000 5, K weight in the center differential and no one mentioned, yeah, no one mentions the shredder. Yeah, the shredder, I like it, man. Okay, the shredder, yeah, yeah. The shredder's good, man. I don't, you know, it's one of those vehicles. There's a lot of some other vehicles like, okay, yeah, we've seen it come and go and whatever. I think it's just a vehicle that it's a good one to keep on your list. Uh, I think it's, for the price point, you know, there's a lot of more expensive vehicles that are out there, but for the price point, 4S. Now, Red Cat, I don't know. I look at their information. I think this one had an 80 amp electronic speed controller in it, but the new one that shows on their website is 120 amp, still 4S, right? We're still dealing with 4S power. So if even if this had an 80 amp, if I'm not mistaken, you know, still running on 4S, I haven't had any problems with it. But as far as when it comes to, you know, oh, I want to run on 6S, you're going to need a different electronic speed controller. And I've run the motor on 6S just for a short time. I don't know how long it will withstand the abuse longer. The motor I have in the shredder is the one from the Landside E. Oh, okay, the ETX. Okay. I have tried the band. Okay, I've tried. I've tried. Let's see. Tired. I tried. Okay, okay, you tried off brands. 2100, or okay, a 2150 kV motor, and it burnt up. Yeah, that's pretty high on the RPMs, considering that this motor here is what, a 1300 kV motor? So I don't know how, I wouldn't, definitely wouldn't go over the 2000 mark for sure. I'd probably keep it around like 1600 because it is a pretty decent sized vehicle. You turn in pretty big tires and everything like that. So, I mean, granted, this one here has got a 2000 kV motor that's in it. 
a little bit smaller, not much really. This thing's heavier than this one. So that's a lot of stress on it anyhow. Back again. What's up, Kelly? So, yeah, those would be kind of the things that, um, man, there's so much stuff, man. There's, and I, uh, yeah. I was going to talk about the, I got a Traxxas Rustler. Man, that thing was hooking up last night. Anyway, it's a two, two wheel drive. But yeah, um, I don't want to kind of lose focus too much on the main subject of the video, but really just kind of, as far as what you missed, oh, we were talking about the shredder. Um, going in regards to, I will have a video on this one tomorrow for you guys, so you guys can check that out with the brushless system. Hopefully, if I get it done today, I will go ahead and do a running video later, either today or I'll probably do it in the morning tomorrow, and then have that video ready for you guys to check it out and have a speed run for you. So I do have, I'll put this little electron or this uh, GPS on it. I'm not saying little, because it's this is a pretty small car to have that big GPS on. This is something Banggood sent me too, so as free to review. It's pretty good. I like it. Not a bad deal. So far, so good. It all matches up with the um, GoPro speed. What motor are you using in that? Uh, this is a the motor that I have here. That's what I'm going to be running. 5400 5, kV motor. And I'll have a video up on it tomorrow. So I'll have that, and then it's paired with... It's a combo deal, anyhow. Then I got a 60 amp electronic speed controller set up for a, two, uh, a 110 scale RC. But... Um, it's a combo deal. I like it. Yeah, it's gonna. It's definitely gonna. It's gonna move for sure. What's the GPS called? Uh, the GPS. Sorry. Thank you, James, for uh, pointing that out. So here's the GPS. Uh, I did another. So it's the GNSS. That's the uh, Sky RC. Yeah, Sky RC. Uh, it can go in kilometers. By default, it's already set to kilometers, and then you can put it to miles per hour. Since I'm in the U.S., I kind of understand that more than kilometers. So, um, but everybody else out in the world other than U.S. is kind of weird like that, you know. So anyway, yeah, you hook it up to your computer and everything like that. Yeah, but bang good. I think it's like around 50 bucks or something like that. You might be able to catch it on, on a sale or something like that. But it seems to be pretty good. I like it. It just has to wait to acquire GPS signal. It shows you a little satellite and then you're good to go. So, yeah, not bad. Let's see here. Have you plugged it into the computer to switch it to miles? No, I didn't have to plug it into uh, my computer to switch it in, uh, switch it to miles per hour. You can do it right on. You just have to hold the. I think it, if I'm not mistaken, you hold down the mode button. It has instructions in here, and it's in English as well. So that's nice. You just hold down the the mode button, I believe, and then it'll just switch it over to miles per hour. So super simple. Don't need a computer to operate this thing, which I do like it. You can track. You can set up for, I guess, as far as uh, metrics or something like that. So that way, if you want to see how far you're, how far you traveled, but you can do like peak speed, average speed, not lots of little uh, things that you can do with it. I like it; it's not bad. It, it came to me pretty quick. Bang good, did me wrong. Yeah, I mean that's what I've heard on some of it. I cooperated with them, and they sent me one of those little WPL C34 crawlers. And the motor burned up before I could even make a video. Now they won't work with me. Um, when it comes to any kind of issues with Banggood, yeah, I mean, depends on it. Like if I'm selling, like say, oh, okay, we're selling this car right here. Oh, you know, hey man, I bought this from you know your link or your affiliate link, and and uh, you know I got a bad one or whatever. You know they're gonna want videos of the actual product. And I know it can be, it's kind of a headache and I've had, I haven't had to experience that because, you know, fortunately for me, um, I've had always received them in good shape. Now I am always, I'm typically in contact with Banggood, not every single day, but usually the rep is talking with me or so. And, uh, if I have any issues, they, you know, going to fix it. Now I've had times where a customer had an issue. And I said, you know, let me Put your information on, not all your, don't expose yourself on, on YouTube, but I'll just point to your issue and let my rep know about it and let's see if they can work it out a little bit. So that sometimes that works as well for some people, at least to get the rep in contact and then push that. Because it's like, hey man, you know what? If you can't do a good service for the people on my audience, then you know, 
this ain't gonna work, you know? So we gotta make sure that people are getting taken care of. I know they probably sell loads of stuff. So I try to help people out as best as possible. So um, I understand some of the horror stories of it as well. And, um, you know, unfortunately, some that's, this happens. And uh, hopefully you can get it worked out. Just be persistent anyhow. Um, they didn't even give me a chance to sell any. <coughs> Sorry. Let's see. I just ordered today. Hopefully it's good as expected. Uh, let's see here. Um, if you're talking about this one is good to be as expected, everything works on your car, man. This thing is great. I only have the other comparison with the uh, WL Toys A959B. And that one it was okay, but I gave that away to a friend of mine, Shane. And the, the bushings, I said, you can't run that thing in dirt, dude. You're going to have to keep it on road, keep it out of the dirt. Why? Because if you get your bushings sand in them, they're just like sandpaper wearing down on those components. And that's the thing that's helping, you know, keep your wheel from wiggling and you know, just keeps everything. So you need bearings. Bearings are, you know, that's why it's just, this is just better because it's got bearings in there. It keeps everything nice and, you know, things run smooth. But if you run it in the dirt, things get gritty and, you know, eventually you'll probably need to replace the bearings. So I try not to run this thing too much in the dirt. I hate running a lot of my vehicles in dirt because sand gets into the bushings or into the bearings. But some of those have plastic seals on them, so I can just take the seals off and clean them. But it's kind of a pain in the butt to have to go through all your bearings and clean them all up. So, uh, yeah, that's the kind of the, the torture of bearings. Let's see here. I'm trying to. All right, so let's see here. It would be nice if you talk, could talk to them for me. I mean, you can send me your information. Um, and I can try and pass, I can pass along over to our rep. They are on Facebook too, at least my rep is. They're on Facebook. I have another one like Kiddo Pan, and my other one is uh, Ava, is my rep now. But um, yeah, I mean, if you want, you can send the information. I'll do my best to uh, pass the information along. Let them know. Just, um, I would say go ahead and, oh, Kiddo Pan was your rep. Yeah, he's actually, he moved to, He's transferred now. He sits right next to, uh, I believe, Ava, which is my new rep now. And um, anyway, he's doing different stuff besides the cars. She d used to do FPV. Now she does the cars. So I don't know as far as if you know what is all happening with them. But you know, I guess they just rotate, possibly, or he's maybe moved up. I'm not 100% sure. But I try to keep in contact with him a little bit too. They seem to be pretty good. Of course, again. If you think about it, they're worldwide, and to scale up to something like that too is very overwhelming. I mean, it's to me it feels it's like a lot of stress, right? But it's a big company; they got to be able to handle that stuff. So when there's issues, you know, but people, you know, there's some scam people out there that'll scam you and tell you that, oh, this came to me bad, and you know, try to get another free RC car. And I know there's good, legitimate people that are out there, but you got to keep in mind too that they're gonna get tried. People are gonna try to scam them for everything. I imagine busy, busy, busy all the time. Yeah. When I talk to them, it's like, get done. What do you, okay, hey, what's going on? Okay, this is what I want. Can you send this to me? Yes, no. Uh, you know, conversations are within like five, 10 minutes, and then that's it. Uh, they got a lot of people that they got to talk to, so it's a lot of stress. They get stressed out for sure. I know uh, even Kiddo Pan was talking to me. He's like, oh, please, you know, if you can correct the links. Where, yeah, he got all stressed out. He got yelled at. Um, so I don't know what they're all under. So, you know, unfortunately, I don't know their conditions as far as how they work, their environments or anything like that, too. So it, it could be a bad deal. I'm not 100% sure. But um, I hopefully they're not bad conditions because I would not like to be supporting somebody that, you know, treats their employees horrible, you know. So we'll have to see. You know, I know they, they're always being monitored, so they can't say stuff that they would want to say anyhow, I'm sure. They, so... Anyway, that's that. Um, yep, the, the issues some people try to, yeah. I mean, that's gonna, it just happens. So they have, you know, I know they try, even my friend, he got one of the WL Toys, eight ninety five nine whatever it is. Um, that car, he got one of them that was bad. And uh, they sent him another one after he did a video of it. And then he's like, oh, the steering's still messed up on it. Yeah, because the problem is, is that you don't have adjustable linkages. Again, this is why this car's so much better. This has all that adjustable linkage that's in there. It does have bearings in it. This was not one of the cars that I could 
uh, let everybody know about because I only had this car hasn't been out when I did the other video of the A959. I jumped on this one. I was like, yeah, that thing looks awesome. It's got a 550 motor in it. Let's go ahead and do that. Send that to me, please. So then, of course, I got a lot of the hits on it. I got like over 15,000 views on just a unboxing or something of it. And then from right there, I did a running video, a couple running videos of it. I love the car. Again, it handles very well. And uh, I would tell you if it's crap. Uh, but from my experience, it's been good. Why would I spend more money putting a brushless system in it if I didn't believe in the vehicle and what it could do? I think it's a good vehicle. I do that with my vehicles. I beat them up a little bit here and there. I try not to beat them up as much, but you know, because it gets expensive, you got to keep dumping your money into it. Super guys, what's up, Andrew Finch? Finch, Finch, something like that. Uh, I just, just, oh yeah, I appreciate that one, Walker. Yeah, I try to give it, you know, I try to give honest reviews with you guys, try to be as, tran you know, try to be transparent as much as possible. Sometimes I forget stuff. Some people will say, hey man, you know, you did, what about this? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't, I left that out. Um, it, it would be minor stuff too, like, oh, your differentials don't have seals in them, but they're going to leak out. It's grease, so it's not really going to leak out much because it's grease. But, um, if it was just liquid, you know, an oil that's super thin, it would come out of there. But yeah, I mean, as far as my vehicles go, I mean, I don't care if I sell something like, hey, man, you know what? This ground pounder, the drive axles suck. So I upgraded them. I sell this car, but, you know, that's the deal. I, I put a brushless system in it. So there's a lot of stuff. I mean, yeah, you know, people say, oh, the hobby's expensive. It can be, depending on how brutal you are with the cars, too. You got to know your limits of your car. You're running Castle System motor in there? Uh, no, Castle System. I do Hobby Wing. I do sell Castle stuff as well, but I like Hobby Wing a little bit more. I don't know if I say a little bit more. I just like they have nice little combos. And I like the colors are a little bit. This would seem to be the better one because Castle, to be honest with you, they seem to be out of stock quite often. So I can't get the small little things that I would like to get. So I just go with Hobby Wing. And I I've been happy with the Hobby Wing stuff too. Shoot, got to head out. All right, man. All right, Andrew. Appreciate you. What's up, Brett? Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching too, man. Yeah, the ground pounder is a beast anyhow. It's got a different transmission that's in there. It's got different drive shaft in it as well to handle more power. And uh, definitely cool. And, and it's been running good on 2S. I've been running on 2S. It can run 3S, but 2S and it's fun. I like it. It does wheelies and stuff like that too. Yeah, but... Definitely. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I think, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get working on this thing too. Uh, cause the idea is to get this thing all set up for you guys so I can have a video for tomorrow, show you guys this thing running. Cause I know you guys are going to be eagerly waiting to see this thing run and how fast it goes. And I'm waiting. I can't wait to get it going. So this is going to be my general layout. I think this is what I'm going to go ahead and do. It's going to be pretty simple to do. Two, I'm going to drill two little holes on the chassis so that way I can get, uh, you know, relocation of my battery. Then from there, the wires that are coming off the electronic or uh, off of the motor, they're a little bit kind of a pain. I wish I could just, I w might solder those. I don't know what I'm going to do. That's my main thing that's kind of a pain because these wires come straight out. And I knew that when I bought the motor. But to come up with something, you know, but come out with something that I can, anyway. I'll come up with something, even if it's just kind of a, like, let's just see how it runs. And then um, kind of make some changes to it. I know you can get, like I said before, you can probably get the 90 degrees that come out here so it can come that way. So I might do something like that. I might raise the body up a little bit. I'm not 100% sure. It's going to be a lot of those things where it's just like trial and error, uh, tweak stuff over time, see if it works better. But I, I definitely want to keep the center of gravity as low as possible, uh, keeping the electronic speed controller down low not keeping it up high because I don't, I don't want to uh, modify the body. And I'm sure a lot of you guys don't want to modify it either. I want to keep it looking nice and fresh on the outside and then mean and tough, ready to go on the inside of it with this setup here. And, you know, I'll be keeping this little 2S LiPo and it will be a 2S system still because it's got the high KV motor in there. But it, it should be, it should scream pretty good. I'm expecting it to scream for sure, no doubt. So stay tuned for that video. Like I said, should have that thing, this thing running by tomorrow anyway. It won't take long at all to configure it other than some little minor things. Do you, do you know the crawler axle part? Yeah. Well, it depends on what axle you're talking about. So I have the short one. This is the short one. That's the left side, obviously it says left side. 
I don't know if the other one for the right side is, you know, 60 or, you know, 58. So this is the short one. This is the one I broke. So that's why I could grab it real quick. I just had it hanging over here. So yeah. And then my big old mess I got going all my greases and yada, yada, yada. All my, that's what happens when you got a lot of stuff that you want to do and just stick it over to the side and then try to keep this area clean. Try to keep it clean, but it always gets slopped up and messy. I'm like, oh man, I gotta, eh, whatever, just stick it off to the side. <laughs> so yeah, it's crazy sometimes. But uh, that's the way I work. Just, uh... but all right, man, I definitely appreciate all you guys watching. Uh, what do you, okay, hold on, let's see here. Uh, let's see, Walker, what do you think about the Typhon 3S? I think for the price of it, $299 is a heck of a good deal for something that can do like 50 miles an hour. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great deal. I think that price point is pretty well. I don't, I never owned one of them, but I would say as far as, uh, you know, Arma has really good reviews. You know, there's, I think it's pretty, I think, it, yeah, it's a beast. I would think you can't go wrong for that price. Uh, I would like to sell the Arma stuff, but uh, I don't. And, but I think they got good stuff anyway. Uh, let's see, armors are so easy to work on. Yeah, it seems to be pretty exposed as far as to what they're doing. That's why I kind of, that's why I like that. Yeah, you got to look at RC cars and look at them like, how much of a pain in the butt is that going to be? How many screws are going to have to come out of that thing to get to the differential or whatever? And you even, I mean, I worked on my X-Max quite a bit, and that was very easy to get to the differentials like they knew that was going to be an issue. That was a success one, but it was easy to get to. I need to build a f oh, the full axles. Oh, I mean, you go, I mean, we got them on our website at omgrc.com, the axles and everything like that. But uh, again, I don't have, I don't have them offhand since I'm doing live right now. But um, yeah, I mean, you can go over to the Red Cat, you can go over to our website and just put in clawback, you know, axles, you can probably find them that way. But um, yeah. Uh, or you can go right over to Red Cat and you can look it up under this. That yeah, Anyway, there's Google out there, man. Plenty of stuff when it comes to that. You can find it easily. Uh, let's see, James here. Do two-wheel RCs have any air control? What? Oh, air control. Um, Not really. Why? Uh, okay, so James asked about you know two-wheel drive. Basically, bashing a two-wheel drive. Why? You don't have the rotation mass as four-wheel drive, so you have two-wheel drives. Depending on the wheels a little bit, you can kind of control it a little bit, but you, we're not going to have the amount of mass, rotating mass, as you would on four-wheel drive. So yeah, two-wheel drive is definitely hard to bash a lot to it. So I would say, I mean, four-wheel drive is definitely the thing. And uh, But I've bashed my shredder, or not my shredder, my, my slash, slash, no. The rustler, I bashed the rustler. That, that did pretty well. If it's balanced out pretty well, then it's not too bad. But you gotta have a nice ro uh, rotating mass of tire too. So it's good. You don't wanna deal with the small tire because you're not gonna have any control. You want that. That's why they balloon a little bit too. You get like, they start to balloon and you can really just kinda control it better in the air. You can speed up those tires and slow them down. So yeah. But yeah. I would say that is the deal. Um, all right, guys, man. Let's see if there's any other questions you guys have. Can you bash the Stampede two-wheel drive? Uh, I don't know about Stampede two-wheel drive. I didn't really care for the Stampede two-wheel drive much. It drove funky. I don't like it. I actually had one. The only thing I have now left of it is a two-wheel is the uh, body. That was it. I got rid of the rest of it. So uh, my advice, but I just didn't like the way it steered. You know, it definitely has, I can't remember as far as oversteer or understeer, or whatever it is, usually two-wheel drives always have where they'll push forward, then they won't turn. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, anyway, kind of like car stuff anyway, real car stuff. But um, let's see. I think that's it. I know you guys are probably anticipating as far as that's why you're joining or whatever too. I definitely appreciate you guys just kind of, kind of fluxing around like 15 views at one time. But if you're still here, Smash that thumbs up if you're, you know, liking the content. Consider subscribing as well, you know, and check us out, omgrc.com. I don't even have a sticker around here to even kind of show you. Oh, yeah, I do. Got that one. 
omgrc.com. Yeah, we sell stuff. Now, I know some of you guys being out of the country, I've had people saying, hey, can you ship to Brazil? Can you ship to Australia? You know, different places. Unfortunately, our vendors, because we sometimes will have to drop ship stuff to customers, they only ship in the U.S. So just to kind of let you know, I've been on your website. Yeah, I appreciate that, Ace88. Yeah, so I mean, we do have a lot of different vehicles here. I try to put those vehicles on the channel if they're stuff that I sell. But there are cases where, you know, like the Traxxas, I like it. And, uh, you know, I wanted something a little bit different than I, I didn't sell it. And I've had Arma on the channel before with the Creighton 6S system. I had that one on here for a little bit and then I got rid of it. So I, I will sell, I will showcase cars I don't sell. Uh, like this one I don't sell, but I do sell, you know, I do have affiliate links for Banggood. So that's what, I wish I had more FPV cameras. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I wish I did have, I wish I had more FPV, you know, as far as drone stuff as well. That would be nice. Uh, definitely Ace88. I, I think you might have been the one that was asking about some stuff. Hey, do you sell drones? I'm like, oh, it's called, we go under multi-rotor. That way, because it depends if it's, you know, drones or four or quad, whatever. So you do sell some planes. Do you have, you know, a little bit of drones? Most of it's going to be, I'm going to say, the drone stuff that we do have. There might be some, like, racing drones. But most of them are going to be more of that, kind of that kid-grade drone, the small stuff that it's kind of inexpensive. And uh, those aren't the stuff that I really like. Hey, what's up, racing cars and fun? What's up, Shane? So, is the Slash good? Man, the Slash. James, man, you know that Slash is good. I like the Slash. I mean, I have the Slash four-wheel drive. But you can make the Slash into a dragster. Man, there, I mean, this, here's the thing. Any of the tracks and stuff, the old stuff, anyhow, um, there's all these different, there's all these part supports out there. There's all different stuff that people have done to it. So if you ask anything tracks is for the most part, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm a fanboy. I'm just being realistic that there's lots of stuff out there for tracks. So let's be real. <laughs> so uh, if you, you know, depending on what you want to do with it, no, it's not, it's not bad, but you know, there's going to be stuff like, oh, it keeps breaking. Uh, I had a slash two wheel drive that keeps breaking. I don't know, you know, as far as the transmission, uh, you scrapped it. I'll be honest. I had a, I had a success system in my, in my Traxxas Rustler. No problems. I didn't even have to even upgrade the drive shaft. It depends on the driver. I think just, so that's again. So you have Ace 88 says, ah, transmission's crap. And, uh, you know, it's broke. Me, uh, I ran a, you know, a system through there that with 4S, 6S, no problems. So all experiences, different experiences. So again, it's just mixed reviews. <coughs> Excuse me. What's up, John? What's up, cuz? Oh, racing cars fun. You got to make a video. Yeah, I got to make a video here too, bro. Uh, you broke it. How did I broke it. Nothing much. Oh, you're saying that I, you broke it. What did I break? <clears throat> I didn't break your car. That's for sure. You broke it. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't break this one either. I'm upgrading it to brushless. Uh, the one I had was used when I bought it, so it was probably worn out. Yeah. So, you know, anytime that, so those are good backstories, right? To say, hey, you know what? Mine wasn't brand new. You know, it probably had a lot of mileage on it, more or less. So, you know, stuff's going to be worn out. And I can even hear in my transmission, yeah, I've run it quite a bit. So, you know, it's time to crack that sucker open and, and do some maintenance. Things don't last forever. That's the thing I think a lot of people kind of expect, like, oh, I bought this track because everybody talks talk so much about it, and then it broke. I mean, those are the, what did you do? Oh, I ran into, a, you know, a pole. I thought, you know, but I saw someone step on it, and I thought it was, you know, indestructible more. You know, there's just, like, there's weird things that people put pedestals on. It's just crazy. So I just, I'm like, okay, buddy. So um, things are going to break just because I had a bad experience. I don't hold them against uh, against Traxxas. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, there's but there's plenty of parts. Like I think what even we sell hot racing transmissions for them, so you can get those things more not bulletproof, but a lot stronger. So, but there's little stuff to it. So yeah, there's a lot of information that's out there. You know, anything that's brand new, you kind of want to sit there and like let's see what happens with those particular cars. You know, is this going to happen? Like again, the HPI, the prime example of it. You know, again. Uh, this is the jump shot two, uh, version two. This one, this yellow one in the back here. You know, oh, we upgraded the transmission in it. You know, it's better, it's stronger. It's yes, it's better and stronger for what? A brushed system. You know, and again, I knew that going into it. 
I was like, okay, you know, maybe it'll be strong enough to handle a brushless system. Uh, but then five minutes, it broke the transmission. Why? Because out of the three uh, gears that are in the transmission, only two are metal. Well, there's your weak link. That plastic one's going to go. So um, it got destroyed. <laughs> Have a good day today. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what will you do with the stock stuff you took out? I'm going to keep it because if there's any chances that I go ahead and revert back to the stock one and I sell it or whatever, I keep that stuff because I use it for other projects sometimes, like even just the brush motors. Maybe I use, I don't think about the micro servo or anything like that. But this stuff here too, maybe I, you know, if someone else, like even I have a friend uh, that he, if he needs something too, I, I just keep them. And then maybe eventually, I don't like to sell them because someone says, oh, well, this doesn't work. I'm like, well, it worked when I had it. So I had no problems with it. So I typically don't sell to me electronics unless they're brand new. And if I do, you know, so that's that. Will you be up at the park today? I don't know if I'll be up at the park today, Shane. I'm sending you an email. Um, so I don't know if I'll be up at the park today, Shane. I'll be working on this one. I'm going to do a video on it. I mean, I'm doing a video right now. But um, I will probably be up there tomorrow. That's my game plan. Because I don't know how long this is going to take. And I hate to kind of leave you hanging there. So I'll probably uh, save my time all today. I got some other stuff I got to do. Um, so just in time. Yeah, so sorry, man. If I didn't say you know your name, uh, just in time there. So yeah, I keep, generally just keep a lot of my stuff for later down the road as far as when it comes to that, that stuff. I don't typically, like I said, don't sell it. Okay, so Ace88, you're gonna, okay, you're gonna send me your, yeah, send me your information over, send me your customer, the uh, customer number for your particular item. Um, if it's been like 90 days or something like that, I don't think I'm gonna be able to help you, but if it's been within, let's say a couple of weeks in, of you receiving it, then it might be, have a chance. But if it's been many months, I won't be able to do nothing with that one, um, but you know I'll try my best. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting rid of this stinking cough. Make your RC car. Yeah, make it brushless here. So yeah, this thing's gonna be a little beast. Hopefully it will. Hopefully it'll be pretty quick. That's the expectation of this thing. Can't wait. <laughs> For sure. I thought this thing I've been talking a little bit more than an hour, but maybe not. Let's see here. All right, so. Um, yeah, it'll be faster for sure. I know it, excuse me, I know it'll be faster, just how much faster it is. We'll find out once we slap a, um, a GPS on this thing and let it rip, that's for sure. It's been a few months since uh, the incident of the uh, C-34. I've talked to the kiddo pan uh, since, but he says that he still, uh, he still can't work with it. Hmm, he says he still can't work with you on it? Hmm. Um, I don't know. You might have to, I hate to say that, but you might have to cut your losses on that one. And, you know, like, hey, you can't do business with you or anything. So I don't know. <clears throat> I'll see. But if it's a, if I think he says I scam them. If that's, I mean, if there's any kind of flag like that, then, you know, I don't know you other than by just us talking here. You know, that's just reality. So it, I'll still send it, say, hey, you know, maybe he can give me a little bit of back history on it. But they're going to say something, you're going to say something, and then I'm stuck in between. So, and I, I don't really want to waste the time, but I will, you know, at least investigate with it too, just to find out a little bit on it. But this is before, if it's been a few months, I mean, I've only been with uh, Banggood here for, well, a couple months anyhow, and eh, probably for about three months or four months. Something like that. I don't know. I lose track of time big time when it comes to stuff anyway, but I'll have to look at my videos. Um, but yeah, send me the information. I'll try to do what I can to have them investigate a little bit on it, see what, you know, possibly. I know they're going to have their own policy and say, hey, it's been too long, but if they're slacking on their communication, that is not your fault. That would be on them and to rectify the issue as quick as possible. But um, depends what all went down, you know. So give me as much information as you can. If you got any pictures, if you got a little video link, send them all to me so we can build up a case and see if they will do anything. Again, uh, if you work with them at one point in time and they already know your backstory on stuff, then it might be one of those where I just get the cold shoulder and 
it is what it is. But I at least try for you, man. Uh, oh, he said you didn't have enough sales. Probably. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So here's the deal. Um, let's go ahead. Um, so Ace 88. I don't know as far as sales. Now, with sales I had on this vehicle, I had over $11,000 in sales or something like that. Yeah, it's probably like eleven thousand dollars in sales, something around there, right? I don't care. I'll be transparent and tell you guys now, but that's not that's not how much I made on it or anything like that. Um, but it, you know, I at first I didn't have, I didn't have, have, I'm like I'm still like a, I'm a a B level at this point in time. I'm not an A level, but I'm a B level. Again, this if you had this car and you got it when I did and you made videos on it, you'd probably be up there as well. Um, you only get a tiny bit of commission. Yeah, you don't get a lot, but I'll be honest with you too. RCs don't, you don't get a lot of RC cars sometimes too. Some of these sales here, you're like, oh man, you know, you probably got that for, let's say this one, like example, oh, you probably got it for a hundred bucks and you're selling for, you know, 260 bucks. Like that's not the case, man. The profit of margin too, it varies so much. And I'll say HPI does not have good profit of margin. Um, just kind of let you guys know about that one. There are some companies like Red Cat does pretty well. They try to take care of, you know, their dealers to give them a nice profit margin as well. Uh, but some of them are slim and I'm like, I ain't selling that one. But um, they sent me $40, one six scale crawler. That was not good quality at all. Oh, okay. So, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know bang good well enough on that part of it as far as you have to pick and choose what you like because they'll tell me like hey i want can we want to send you this i don't want that crap i don't want it uh i look for here's i'll be real with you what do i look for what I, what my viewers look for in some cases i like big motors you know big motors 550 540s what's going to make it go fast you know you know we want we want to put uh rc car in a small pack we want a small package big motor let it go fast, let it eat, it's kind of funny, and have a good time with it, beat it up, whatever, and that's cool. But, um, so that's what I look for. I look for RC, I tell them, like, don't send me anything that doesn't have anything, I don't want a 380 motor that's brushless or a brushed motor, I don't want that crap. I'm looking for stuff that's not really on the toy grade level, and that's pretty much where I'm at with it. I'm like, because one thing is the whole COPPA crap from YouTube or whatever, that whole deal, and they're talking about, you know, oh, is that a kid video, friendly video, or, or it's, uh, you know, it's made for kids, these RC cars. What I'm doing, I don't think some little, some little kid of eight years old, unless they're, you know, skilled and they have their kid, you know, these tools are not for little kids, right? Um, even the car itself, not made, it says for 14 years and older. So there's, there's certain things that, you know, they're going to say that it might be for kids and it's, that's crap. So it just, that stuff burns me up. There's a lot of stuff that um, I kind of hold back. But um, <laughs> when it comes to that, and I probably shouldn't, but it, I don't want, that's not what you guys are here to watch. But that's the realness because that's what's coming down with YouTube and because of the whole cop of crap. It's just, um, you know, hey, do you want to have monetized so you can make money on YouTube, which a lot of people do? Or, you know, if you put it as kid, I lose the whole community. I can't talk to you guys. You can't talk to me. So, you know, if by chance you have the opportunity to, you know, voice your opinion on the whole COPPA or read more on it, it doesn't affect just YouTubers that are making videos like myself. It affects you guys as viewers too, being able to uh, watch these videos. So, you know, read up on it a little bit more. I don't want to, because I'm not a lawyer and I don't give any kind of advice or anything like that. But those would be just kind of, you know, read up on it a little bit, understand a little bit more uh, for, you know, content creators as well. And what YouTube was meant to be, you know, it's not meant for uh, kids that are under 13 years to be watching on YouTube in the first place. There's YouTube kids. And, uh, you know, my analytics only goes down to 13 years old. Why? Because they can't track kids that are under 13 years old in the first place. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on about it. And it's upsetting. And it's, uh, I'm under, not really sure where YouTube's going to go come here next year January 1st so it's yeah it's a big problem FTC website you can post comments on yeah yeah so there's a great place to go FTC as far as for the whole COPPA issue uh, yeah the crawler okay so yeah I've been watching other people too with it so it's just uh, man. Um, but 
All right, I, I don't want to get into that much on my channel right now. I really want to just let you guys know. In re yeah, I want to go on to the brushless stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get cracking on this. I'm going to probably get something to drink. Just water, not any alcohol, <laughs> so you guys know. Um, and then get something to eat. And then I'm going to start cracking away on this car too. Uh, let's see, Jordan here. Still no slipper clutch. Really? I'm not putting a slipper clutch in this thing. I don't need a slipper clutch. It's going to be on-road anyway. Um, I'm not jumping this thing, and uh, that's the reason why I think if you're looking for a slipper clutch, I don't need a slipper clutch in this car. Uh, yeah, if you're putting the power down, yeah, it has a little bit of slip there, and of course, or if I'm jumping, you know, and getting into the slipper clutch, I don't need one. Um, I know what they're there for, but for me to put a slipper clutch in it, I don't do that. Uh, let's see, the Arma 550 uh, brush motors are good. Yeah, probably so. Uh, I don't know how fast they are or anything like that. But I would say they do like, what, 30-something miles? They do right around 30 miles an hour, something like that. So, um, yeah, I would. I don't know what the brush motor I think there's still, what, a 12 turn? There's only so much you can get out of, out of a brush motor until you need to go brushless. I mean, but if you want to make it a little bit faster, you might be able to go... I don't know what turn this is or what this can, can handle or, you know, as far as this is like a 30 amp electronic speed controller. So, oh, let's see here. I think I got, hold on a second here. Is, oh, okay, 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 okay. I just want to make sure. Okay, so I got your email too as far as that AC8. I was like, whoa, what happened there? I know that they are Sunday, so they'll be at work here tonight. Um, gosh darn it. Okay, yeah, this is like a 30 amp electronic speed controller. So, you know, pushing too much, you know, and if you decide to go with a different electronic speed controller, you got to go with a radio because, well, the radio is paired with this. Anyway, that's why all the electronics are going in this car. And I'll go into it a little bit with the, uh, the video that I do tomorrow, letting you guys know, uh, you know, all the stuff that has to go into it, at least what I'm doing when it comes to the uh, micro servo to the motor to the electronic speed controller and why i did what i did for the most part and then some stuff i would just say well because that's what i did <laughs> so that would be about it um yeah that's that's about it i don't want to beat this dead horse anymore on regards to what i was doing yeah you know after that part i found okay so ac88 i found out that the uh brushed esc they they put it in the okay and there it says it's 45 okay <clears throat> um, da, 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 da. I think as far as I'm not going to go by what this little thing is so maybe some people put different uh, systems in it that are from different cars and that's cool go ahead and um, you know do that but you know I'm going to put a nice system in it and let it eat on that <laughs> so um, but yeah, you can mix and match stuff up. You know, if, if you find another electronic speed controller that will work with the setup that you, that's in the car and maybe whatever. I know some people put 3S in there and I was like, what? Why are you putting 3S on that little tiny thing? You're going to burn it up. And people did burn, burn them up too. That's the same motor in ESC that's in the WL toy one. Yeah. Um, let's see. I know someone else had said something here. I was going to go... Okay, so micro drone channel... Let's see, I was going to go with a brushless, but after doing the math, I just bought the uh, Tycon Solar brushless for 180 180 bucks. Um, are you talking about the same thing here, Mike? You put a $180 system in this car? That's kind of crazy. Which is better, to me and models to buy... Oh, which <laughs> Allen B, would it be? Um, which is the best Tamiya model to buy? <laughs> Man, that's like, that's, uh, I don't think there's any, uh, yeah. Mm, I don't have any words for that one as to which one. Depends on the car that you like in there. And then you're going to need to research as far as to what chassis and everything like that. Because the chassis I had before was what? I don't even remember. The TT-02, I think is what it was. It was okay. Yeah, he's got Allen B. Yeah, the TT-02 is what I just said. So uh, I knew someone was going to say that. 
Uh, that one was okay. Um, but time. Yes. Okay. So that's that. Um, yeah, Tamiya stuff or whatever. Tamiya, Tamayo, whatever you want to call it. Tamiya, whatever. Um, <laughs> Tamiya, Tamayo. Though, I mean, those cars, they're good, but they're not, I don't think they're great. But there are vehicles, there are, it, it's kind of like, it, they're older RC cars that they keep, you know, doing. And, and um, I don't know. They're great for building. I love the cars. The, the instructions are pretty well. But they do come with, like, friction shocks. Some of them. There are other ones that are, like, aluminum, steel. There's different levels of Tamiya as well. So, you, you know, for a small little, I mean, myself, I got into this one here. Right, this little Tamiya. So this one here, a little Tamiya, it's it's okay, you know, a little Grasshopper or two. But it's got a 380 motor in there, which I don't like it. But you can put a 550 motor that's in it. I had the Tamiya Super G. This was something I went back on. Same, but um, yeah, I would just. They're just this is old school stuff. Um, I like it. But um, I don't buy them all the time just because of the fact that I feel like they're going to break. Uh, it's same. Same car, but with slipper clutch. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, adjustable motor mount and brushless motor. The one for it is a cheaper version. Yeah, of course. I know this thing was a cheaper version of it. People are saying, oh, the other car that was like this from LC Racing was, you know, like 200 bucks or whatever. Well, let's see. Hmm, do the math. Uh, 70 bucks or whatever it is, 80 bucks for this one or the other one that's more expensive. It has some adjustments. I could make adjustments on the motor. I want to just keep it simple, you know. But if you have, <clears throat> but if you needed to, you might be able to, um, you know, put those other parts in it, those other components in there, and make it, you know, slipper clutch or whatever else like that. But I I'm not gonna do all that stuff to it. I'm just, I'm going by the people that have bought one of these and just want to do some upgrades to it or give some people some ideas too. Um, it's quiet <coughs> excuse me I'm off this uh, let's see RC player let's see here where we're at uh, I just wanted a, a great touring car any suggestions on brands to consider so Alan B <coughs> and looking for a touring car I guess there's all different ones that are out there too Yeah, touring cars, I, I haven't gotten into a lot of them, so I would not be the person to ask on that one. I'm looking through these comments here, too, sorry. Um, I'm off this week about to get uh, to B, oh, to BC and use my buddies. Oh, okay, right on. Uh, let's see here. I think I'm, some of these are internal uh, conversations, so I'm looking over them, sorry, here. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Start right over here. Let's see. I'm just looking through. Sorry, guys. I'm just kind of... Okay, so like micro drone here. I have the 144. Anyway, I'm just going to call it 144. We all know what I'm talking about at this point. Uh, I love it, but after doing the math, I feel going and brush this made more... Going brush this made more sense to just buy another car. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? I mean, let's see how much... Let's say this thing costs 80 bucks, right? And then your your system... It's to each their own, right? I mean, because what do you people do? Oh, well, they spend thousands of dollars on one little car. Maybe they bought some Volkswagen Beetle or something like that, and they put this killer motor in there. Well, you could have bought something else, possibly, you know, for that was nicer looking or whatever. But people do that stuff. So people, you know, people are going to do this. They're going to go ahead and put a brushless system in it. They, people do all these upgrades to them. And uh, honestly, here's the other thing. Here's the other takeaway on here, too. That's why I'm keeping this stuff, right? So once I'm done, I get some speed runs in. Hey, this thing's pretty cool. I take the electronics out. I repurpose them for another vehicle. That's it. So that's why I did what I did. So there's, there's where I'm getting with all this stuff. I do stuff. I take stuff out of like this electronics that are in here. Brush some came out of another system, out of another car. Repurpose it, throw it in something else. <clears throat> so if you were watching my earlier videos, on my channel, you'll know I repurpose motors. I got a bunch of them sitting off to the side too that I'll just repurpose. Oh, Micro Drone RC, yeah. I love your channel, man. Just sharing my thoughts on the car. Yeah, I appreciate it. 
the tone of my voice is, is changing, I'm sure, as because I uh, probably need a little bit of water in my throat. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, I try to, um, I know what people are thinking when they, they see an RC car and they say, oh, 30 miles an hour, and they don't think it's really that. It's, it's not quick for everybody, but it's fast for some people too. So, um, you know, some people might be fine with just the way it works. And I was kind of content with it, but I was like, you know what? People are going to want to go brushless and want me to do a brushless. So let's, you know, put a brushless system in there, show the people, make it go a little bit faster. Not to go a speed demon going 80, 100 miles an hour because this thing's going to take off and I don't think it's going to, without, yeah, there's a lot more to it. But um, I think going, if it went like over 40 miles, you know, miles an hour, that would be pretty cool. And maybe it goes faster than that. Uh, it's planted to the ground. Uh, you can get a brushless system on Banggood pretty cheap. Yeah, of course. Uh, I was going to do that. I was gonna. I was gonna tell Banggood, hey, send me, you know, you know, here's the combo that I found. You know, please send that to me. And but I didn't want to do that. Um, I know there's some stuff like Ghoul Racing. People use some of that stuff. Doesn't really like. I had a friend that uh, he put a Ghoul Racing 2S system in his uh, Rustler. It wasn't that, he thought it was fast. In my opinion, it wasn't that fast. He's like, oh yeah, I like this. I'm like, I'm gonna smoke you with it, my 2S system that's in it. But you know, he's happy with it. So I know all brushless systems are not created equally. And, uh, but you know, hey, this is a cheap car. Put a cheap brushless system in there. Have fun with it. Hey, teach their own. Uh, it's just something I sell these things. I like the hobby wing system. I haven't had any issues with them. So I like them. I kind of like the quality, you know, of RC cars and some stuff too. So yeah, let's see. Uh, Star Racer, good brand. Let's see. Oh, Star Race. Okay, I saw the uh, Ace uh, Ace eighty eight there. So uh, the Star. I looked at the Race Star. You know, I was looking at that one because it was an orange one. I think it's an orange one. And it was like whatever the KV was on it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But uh, I was like looking at that. And I was like, okay, it's pretty inexpensive. You can get the whole combo for probably like 30 bucks or something like that. You know, this combo is definitely going to be over 100 bucks. Just kind of let you guys know. You know, these things with all the stuff I got right there, you know, you're looking probably over 100 bucks right around there. And people are going to be like, what? I, I'm not going to spend that much. Yeah, of course you're not. But uh, it's there for people that want to. You know, it's always an option. Say, oh, I like, you know, hobby wing stuff. Cool, well, let's stick it in there. You know, it's a cheap car, but we'll put something more expensive in there. You know, everybody does different stuff. I just, um, so yeah, I mean, this stuff can be debated all day, but at the end of the day, it's your car. You do what you want with it, right? So, um, you know, this is my car. I show you guys this stuff too. So yeah, that's why, you know, that's the thing about, hey, everybody being different show different things. Um, I bought the e Revo, ended up uh, messing all, let's say missing all most of my tracks of stuff in. The, oh, well, that stinks. RC player, you, uh, you lost all your e Revo stuff in the in your move. And the first thing that gets moved is my RC stuff gets not touched until I'm ready to, <laughs> yeah. There's certain stuff, man, I have electronics, you don't touch them. So, um, I'm moving stuff. I'm keeping an eye on stuff. So I I typically will move my own stuff if I'm moving. Like no one else pack it. I'm packing my stuff. You can pack yours. I got a lot more stuff. It's going to take me a little bit longer, but I know where my stuff's at. You know, market or whatever. I hate moving anyhow, but I've done it. And I didn't have a collection of RCs like this, but I had electronics. And those are my babies when it comes to electronics. You can ask my wife. I don't like stuff. To, don't touch my electronics. <laughs> that's, a, that's the way it is. My daughter knows it too. You get killed. So, what's up? Bang your head. What's up, man? So yeah, I've been uh, cracking on this uh, live stream for a little bit. Here we go, 79 minutes. <laughs> but um, oh, but yeah, here, give you a little shot of it here. So this is kind of the idea of the placement of the brush or not whatever uh, the brushless motor. Obviously, it's going to go there. Got the electronic speed controller sitting there. We're gonna put the servo obviously in the same exact spot. We're gonna get we got the receiver. We're gonna stick that probably on top of the servo, and then we'll put the uh, on and off power on top of that little platform. I'm gonna cut that platform too. Relocate the battery 
tray, so I'm gonna move it up towards the front a little bit. So I'm gonna only have to cut two little holes in the chassis, just kind of giving uh, one of my buddies a little insight on what's going on so you don't have to go back from the beginning. Um, so now I'm all warmed up now. <laughs> yeah, man, I appreciate that, bang your head. Um, so hopefully you get your parts soon. I know that you were waiting for those things to come in the mail, but it might be out for a while. <laughs> the ESC would fit better up in the front by the bell crank, wouldn't it? Um, here's why I did that. Uh, it, even if it does fit better up towards the front, look at the body style. You can see like it kind of dips down low here and then there's like a little raised up in the back. That's why I'm doing it because um, because the body shell is kind of restricting me where I want to put stuff at. And so that's why I'm doing that. And if anything, if I had to, I can raise up just the rear of the body just a little bit and that will allow wires to, you know, go in there a, bit, a little bit better. Oh, that dip would block the fan. So yeah, the dip would definitely block the fan. That's why I didn't put it up on top or I had to cut a hole in the top here or put a, you know, a ram air kind of hood scoop in it. I didn't want to, I don't want to hack up that, but I will. Here's the other thing why I'm thinking about going with it in the rear too, is I can cut this little spot out right here and get a little bit of airflow going into that duct more or less. And that'll kind of go over top of the fan of the electronic speed controller. That's the idea. So that's why I've been, you know, I'm just, this is why I do mock-ups just to kind of look at it, think it over a little bit before I do any kind of cut and drilling or anything like that. And that's why I want to do this video too for anybody that says, Hey, you know, maybe try this. That's why I'm trying different things. I thought about raising the whole body up more. And, uh, but, you know, that's why I have like these little body posts here. I was going to raise the whole body up a little bit more. You know, I got, I'm thinking of the whole entire thing and I want to make it easy for you guys. If you decide to go with something like this too, that's why I was kind of doing all that kind of stuff. When you cut a hole in the body, just uh, put a piece of screen. Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. I have like a little screen. Um, yeah, I mean, I could do that little mesh. I was, I have some actual screen. I got it over in my little uh, cabinet. You know, if I did that, I'd put like a little screen over it. But here's the thing, when it comes to the body, I kind of like the way the body is and I don't really wanna hack it up. But if I did like, I could put like a little screen mesh here. I don't want to ruin the integrity, but also if the car flips, we've got to kind of keep that in mind. You know, if you're crashing, you know, and those aren't planned. I don't want to have my electronic speed controller up on the top there where things get smashed. Uh, I want to keep it low where it's got a little bit of protection. Everything's a little bit lower and that the body will have a little bit of more impact taking that blow than it would be my electronic speed controller on top. Plus the wires coming off all that mess. So that's why I want to keep it lower and then I have the less modifications that need to be done to uh, get wires and all that good jazz. <laughs> so that kind of stuff. Oh no, no one touches my RC stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. ACR RD88, yeah, man. Yeah, no, no, you don't touch it, man. I've had people like some kids come up to me too. They're like, hey, can I drive it? I'm like, mm, this car goes pretty quick. and. If you break it, I gotta fix it, and you walk away and you go back to your place. So I'm not really willing for you to damage my stuff. So I let people, well, I got one of my friends, Shane, he's like, hey, you can drive my car. But I'm a little bit on the, I don't know. I've let him drive it a little bit, but I I don't typically, unfortunately. I don't let people drive my stuff, man. Um, I think I may have, have been stolen from my... Oh man, that would suck, man. Let's see. Let's see when you cut a hole in this. Okay, so glue the screen. Okay, so yeah, hot glue. Okay, so AC88. Yeah, as far as if I do the screen, I'll do like a little mesh. If I do the screen, uh, yeah, I'll do a little mesh, a little hot glue. I got a little hot glue hanging gun right over here too. That's my buddy, man, the hot glue. Got to have one of those when you do RC stuff. Uh, even if you don't have double stick tape hot glue for the time being, you know, mock it all up, see if that's going to work. Um, yeah. So in the Dremel stuff, you know, I've had this Dremel since I was in middle school. So yeah, cutting stuff, drilling stuff, dynoing motors. So I've been through quite a bit as far as the RC stuff, for the most part. So when people say some stuff, I just kind of like, I'll give you a thumbs up, I'll give you a like, but I, you know, sometimes I, so, you know, again here, I don't know, you know, where I need to place everything exactly. That's why I share these with you 
and uh, you know get some other insights too but i have a good idea as far as where i want to play stuff but uh you know when it comes to rc stuff you know i'll play stupid sometimes and just uh you know let people talk weird stuff sometimes and i'll just okay that's cool i've had some of my friends like man you just agreed with that right i'm like why open that can of worms up just let them talk um you know <laughs> if they feel comfortable talking about some weird stuff i don't know it just crazy what people talk about sometimes or say I had someone talking about when I was bashing, they're like, oh, landing on the grass is really bad for your RC car than, you know, landing on something like concrete. Did you hear what you said? Landing on grass is bad for your stuff. Tell me about, uh, tell me about it. I can't let it go. Um, I think, I'd, but yeah, man, RC player, man, I imagine that would be, I'd be upset with that for sure if someone stole my stuff. Um, yeah, so we got camera systems there. You should do a rebuild on and auction it off. <laughs> I should do a rebuild and auction it off. Uh, if you're talking, I guess that you're talking to me there, Walker. Uh, if I do a rebuild and then auction it off, I mean, I have a YouTube. I mean, I have an eBay account too. Just OMGRC. It's on our YouTube, but I have all kinds of different stuff on there, and I've had, <laughs> I've had some stuff, and uh, you know, this is why it's not for kids as far as some of the stuff, because I mean. Uh, you know, like one guy was like, hey, I saw your, you know, your eBay and, you know, one has, you know, you got now, maybe I won't say it. I don't know. But there's some, some stuff that's on there that's adult and then there's stuff that's on there that's like religious stuff. And why? It's because I have a buddy that has a furniture shop and I have a friend that is, you know, is, goes to church and he, and he gives me stuff from church. So you can imagine there's like diversity there and it's just stuff that I try to sell, you know, so whatever. Have you done any giveaways? I've done a giveaways before. Here's the deal. I'll give you exactly why I don't generally do giveaways, right? If I put giveaways in my videos, first thing that's going to happen is someone on YouTube is just scouring the internet for giveaways. That person comes on there. Generally, they're the people that win. And then I give them the stuff, never hear from them again. They're not, they're not a subscriber. They're not a follower of any sort. They're just looking for the free stuff and then they're out. So that's why I don't typically do them because you just you just get the wrong people. If it was my genuine fans and I do a, a giveaway and I would like those people to win that says, yeah, you know what, uh, bang your heads or you know Ace eighty eight or you know any of the other guys that are like you know whatever or you know if there's people that are true subscribers and they are true to the channel, those people I want to see win. If I do it, I might do something like, hey, I was thinking about. And it's not, maybe it's not fair for everybody, but if you know, hey, yeah, you're in the US, yeah, you bought something from omgrc.com and in the month, hey, we're gonna do a $150 giveaway, you know, or something, or we're gonna give away a car. That's probably what I would do my giveaways would be on the, not on the OMGRC YouTube channel, but it would be on the website that we have. And there's a lot of stuff to it, regulations, laws, and stuff like that too, that you have to follow. And also accounting when it comes to this was something that was so there's a lot of crap to it so it's not just simple giveaways really doing it correctly you got to follow laws and all that local law crap and I, it gets complicated to me it just takes the fun away from it and i've had some people where i did a i did a hat giveaway and never saw that dude again he's just gone oh yeah i'll post something on instagram or whatever nope nothing never tagged nothing so those are aggravating so that's why there you go in a nutshell that's why I don't typically do giveaways so um, can you tell if they are subscribed? Um, I, I'll be honest with you. Once I hit over a thousand subscribers, I lost the ability to see who are my new subscribers. Like saying before, like, oh, okay, James, I just got a subscriber from James. Cool. Like I could see that he did it. Now, after a thousand, because I, you know, like it, within a month's time, I had like over 500 subscribers, which was awesome. And it's more or less due to this car and everything like that too. Um, is that it, it grew quite a bit really quick and but I've been banging away at this for a while but I sometimes I can see all the subscribers on there but generally you can't see them I don't know I'll have to look at analytics I can look at some of that stuff too and see who's there but yeah uh, I got some stickers from uh, da, 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 yeah, okay so um, in the UK from their store and they arrived in four days wow that's pretty good I just get, I don't know what, when I ship stuff overseas, which I've never done as of yet, 
Um, I'm not sure if is it gonna get to the person? How much is it gonna cost? I get scared with all that as far as, cause that's, I do stuff on eBay and I just ship in the US cause it's already expensive as it is. And then I tell them like, hey, it's gonna cost you 150 bucks to ship it to you. <laughs> and they're like, ah, I'll just try to see if I can find it, you know, here in my country. I'm like, okay, that sounds right. Addis, let's see. Milbergs, Milbergs, I guess, uh, Mybergs. I'm not sure. I'm sorry, dude. If I max, I said, hello. I want uh, what are the tires and when did you buy them? If you're asking about these tires here, these are from Banggood. They're not, you need to get CA glue. So CA glue, what is that? Just glue for the tires. It just mends to plastic, to the rubber. It's good stuff. Um, so these are good tires. I picked them out. They were like 10 bucks or a little under 10 bucks before shipping from Banggood. I had them send these to me and I just put some CA glue on there and they've been good. They actually have nice traction that's on them. Do I know what model and all that stuff to them? Unfortunately, I don't, but I've done other videos and I've tagged them. And one of my few recent videos, I've tagged these tires because I thought they were pretty good. Um, I had them for a while and then I just decided to like, hey, I need to slap these on here and then let people know about them. So that's what I did. So yeah, I like the tires. They're a little bit smaller dimensions than the stock tires that come on this car. And also just gonna let you guys know about these tires on that come stock on the car. The front ones are a little bit skinnier than the rear. So they're a little bit different. I don't like that. I mean, it's good for, you know, traction or whatever, just to kind of aesthetically. But um, I like them if they're the same. It's just easier to buy tires that are identical on both sides or all the way around. Oh, I actually like them. Might get them because of that. Yeah. I like them. They're 12 millimeters. I mean, this is nice too. This car is 12 millimeter hexes that are on there. So simple, no, no thinking. Oh, 12, 12 millimeter, millimeter hex. Cool. Good to go. So I like it. But yeah, I appreciate, you know, asking the questions there. Uh, let's see. Ace 88 eBay with shipping international is easy. The hub that you send the packages to, they just forward it for you. Okay. Well, that's cool eBay scares me, man. When I make a sale or if I get a question asked, I get like, I get all stressed out because I'm like, oh, they're going to say like, oh, this was damn it. Anyway, that's a whole eBay thing, uh, but I sell a lot of stuff on, I sell quite a bit of stuff on eBay. But um, yeah. Oh, are these available or they on back order? As far as if you're talking about the 144, I'm going to go with just to shorten it up. I don't know, depending on where you're at, where they're coming from, what hub, these might be available or not. So you just have to check and see. Um, you can always ask the Banggood rep before you make any order, say, hey, this is where I live. Is this available now? That's probably gonna be your best bet before uh, you know placing an order. It might be a little bit time consuming. But uh, you know, these things, they've been having these things in stock that I'm aware of. I know some people were saying, oh, I had to wait a little bit. And I don't know how upfront they are about back orders or anything like that. So, um, you know, be up, you know, things to ask before you order. Is that in stock? If it is, you know, when am I going to get it? You know, like based on the shipping, they, they can expedite shipping pretty cool, pretty quick. Sorry. WL4 yeah, is available now at, you know, 89. I, I do have a promo code that was good. I don't know if it's still good or not, but it was, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but you can go back to my other videos too. So if you want to jump off of here, um, um, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, but you can always, yeah, sorry. I'm, I have like, went brain fart real quick here. I, I don't know. I just lost my train of thought on that one. I got, uh, sorry, Walker, he's like, hey, man, nice uh, website. Uh, got to support you. Yeah, uh, you can support me. There's all different ways. Subscribing, also, you know, leaving comments. Uh, you know, also when it comes, if you like this car, you can always follow the link. There's those affiliate links that are in there. If you want to go to our website, yeah, there's, you know, there's different ways to, you know, give support too. We actually do super chat as well. So you're like, Hey, what's super chat It's where you can donate. You can basically, yeah, I don't know how it all works on your side of it, but you can donate money to me. You can have their stickers that you can leave, uh, that you buy. And then, you know, um, it'll show up on, on this, on this video. It's like, Hey, thanks. Uh, you know, ACE 88 for the $2 super chat, you know, something I'm just giving you an example. I know he didn't do that, but I'm just saying you can do the super chats. Your channel is one of a kind because you you respond to your viewers. I try to do responding to my viewers. You gotta keep in mind too, my channel is pretty small, right? You know, it's like 2,200 people, something like around there. So it's small for a YouTube channel, but um, to me, it doesn't matter because it's still that's a lot of people still that 
took the time to subscribe and uh, they're watching. So uh, yeah, I appreciate it. You know, I try to get back with some people. Some people leave <laughs> some weird stuff. So I'm like, I'm not sure how to respond to that. And, but I try to respond to everybody as I can with, you know, response to their, their questions as much, best as possible. What's up, Charlie86? What's up, everyone? What's going on, man? Sunday. Uh, let's see. So, yeah. Um, I, yeah, that's what I try to do when it comes to the channel. You know, I learn from other people, too. When it comes to, you know, RC stuff, you know, from you guys as well, leaving comments, you know, leaving suggestions. Hey, there's this, that, you know, maybe it's a suggestion for me, but it's also a suggestion for others out there as well. Some people have off the wall comments, so take it for what it's worth, you know, but, uh, so what car is this? This is the, uh, doesn't make, it doesn't make it any better by putting the body on it, but it is the 144-001 WL Toys. It's a 114th scale. This is our brush motor that came out of it. We're putting a brush, brushless system in it. So yeah, there you go, boom. Ace 88, just, there you go, took care of it for me. So yeah, this is definitely, yeah, uh, it's a cool car. It's under a hundred bucks. It's good, I like it. I've talked more on this one, I need to actually. Yeah, hopefully it will, Charlie. Charlie 86, man. Uh, hopefully it will rip pretty good there with the setup that I have in it. It's gonna be on a 2S LiPo just to kind of let people know too. I'm trying to keep it uh, with that same battery layout because putting a 3S in there might cause a challenge possibly. So we'll, we'll see. But anyway, this motor is only good for 2S LiPo because of the KVs that's in it. So it says it in the manual. So let's go by the manual on that one. Let's see here. I like it, that it comes with metal shock towers. Yeah, the metal shock towers are good, man. That's it. Okay, thanks to know. I wait forever for... GPM parts. That's the GPM. So RC. Uh, I don't know what the GP. What is that? Gosh, I don't know what that. Uh, RC player as far as the GPM parts. I don't know. Um, I don't know what. Uh, maybe that's a different brand or something. I'm gonna see here. I get stuck on that one. I like that it comes with metal shocks and the towers. Uh, yeah, the shock towers and the aluminum shocks that are on there. It's great. I like that it has all full bulk bearings in there. It's all adjustable with all your linkages. You know, the shocks are good. They seem, I mean, there's oil in them, so they're not like just a uh, faux shocks that, you know, they actually can hold oil. They don't leak. I haven't had any problems with leaking or anything like that. Oh, it's a China part. Okay, yeah, sorry. GPM is a China parts. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. I was like, I don't know what that is, but uh, speaking of China, oh yeah, but speaking of China, the price, you can't go wrong with this. Yeah, I would say as far as that one, uh, Milberg's. I'm gonna go with Milberg's. Sorry if I if I didn't get that right, but it looks like Milberg's to me. Um, sometimes I go by the first name, sometimes the last name. We'll just mix it up here on this channel. <laughs> when it comes to, the, I try to get it. Uh, WL Toys just keeps getting better and better. I would say that you're probably right on that one as far as WL Toys. I, at first, I was like. Really, to be honest with you, I thought I kind of sold myself out when it came to the RC stuff when it comes to these cars. I was like, this not really felt like a true RC car at one point in time. And, uh, you know, getting into it more and more, I was like, you know, these are not bad little RC cars. They are hobby grade. You can replace them. You know, I felt like this was, okay, let's go ahead and let's do this. Um, they're not bad. And a lot, you know, to be honest with you, a lot of people like yourselves out there, or that's what they're buying, right? Uh, if they're looking to get into the hobby, this is a great platform to get into it just because of the fact that it's low entry level, you know, when it comes to the cost. You know, you're not spending 200 and let's say 60 bucks on something like that that's a crawler and then you're like, you know what, I don't like it. Well, at least you only sunk 80 bucks or, you know, let's say under 100 bucks for this vehicle and, you, you know, you got everything that you needed. Not to say that one comes with, it comes with everything you need too, but um, I made that one faster. But uh, just to kind of keep it simple, yeah, this is simple, it's cheap, and uh, you know, it, it's budget friendly for most people to you know, get into the, the hobby. Remo is another good China uh, brand. So Remo, Ace 88 too, I've had some people say, you know, Remo, because sometimes Remo is a little bit like uh, another brand. So 
Um, I'm not sure how safe I'd want to play that brand on my ch channel because we all know that, um, you know, I don't know. But I wouldn't mind having some Remo stuff anyway, to be honest with you. I like some. I would like to try out their short course trucks and, and what have you. So that might be something I do down the road. Depends on how much, you know, honestly, how much revenue I, I make from uh, Banggood. So Banggood will say, hey, you know, you're – your stream as far as revenue streams not looking so great because you're not selling a lot of stuff um, but i got to keep in mind too banggood is one revenue stream youtube's another revenue revenue stream omgrc.com is another revenue stream ebay is another one i gotta balance you know balance out all that stuff and but i gotta balance out my own products that i sell too so just to kind of let you guys know so i can't always go on wl toys or whatever banggood sends me i got like hey by the way we do sell other hobbies you know, great stuff here. We got, you know, when it comes to Red Cat, we got Tamiya, we got, I don't sell Traxxas, but we sell Team Associated, we sell Habao, and, uh, you know, Kyosho, and HPI. So we sell different, you know, things like that too. So, but there's a lot of stuff on the website just to kind of let you guys know too, and it's always changing. Really, uh, really is a good time to be in the RC. Yeah, it is. Uh, RC Player, it is a good time because there's plenty of selection that's out there for everybody to enjoy the hobby. And at the end of the day, it's all about your experience enjoying the hobby, right? It doesn't matter like, oh, well, you bought that. That thing's a piece of crap. Well, maybe not for them. Maybe that works for them. So I don't try to do any. I'm not trying to, you know, downplay anybody or say that, that that's junk. You shouldn't have bought that. You know, did that make you happy? You like that? Yeah, I like it. It's cool. Cool, man. And that's all that matters. And uh, that's what the hobby is. You know, when I started in the hobby, no one was saying, oh, you shouldn't have got that little Tyco piece of crap because you can't replace anything on it. That's what got me started into the hobby is the little toy stuff. And then from there, I went to the Tamiya. I built my own RC car. And then from that point, I started racing. And here's my race car that I put my own chassis on. I mean, this was, I put it, pieced it all together. It's a team associated, but it's all carbon fiber. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that's been done to it. When I used to race back in the day, so... You know, when I was just in, in middle school, so I went from elementary school into middle school, still in middle school and started racing. So I kind of built my way up. You know, you learn. I think kits are a great way to get into the hobby. Why? Because it's hands on learning all the components and how things are put together. Um, that way you know how to take it apart instead of just a spread, you know, a sheet showing you how to disassemble it. Why not build it and build it, feel comfortable building it. And if you break something, you know how it all gets taken apart. And I think that's always good. I think another thing is don't go rely on your local hobby shop to solder up all your wires. Learn how to do soldering. I'm sure there's lots of videos out there to solder. I don't say I've never burned myself with a soldering gun. If you're always careful with it, you're not going to hurt yourself. You know, I have, I got safety glasses. There's all, I mean, be careful. I never cut myself with a Dremel, knock on wood. <laughs> um, always being careful with all that stuff. Of course, accidents can happen. So it's good to wear your safety stuff. So if something does happen, you know, you're at least a little bit protected with some of that stuff. Uh, you seem for super friendly. Yeah, I mean, I try to be, you know, open with people. And, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, the stuff that I'm passionate about as far as RC stuff. So I definitely um, want to share that information with people, too. I think it's a great hobby to be in if you like to tinker and stuff like that, too. So um, uh, let's see. If, um Super okay, so let's see here. Charlie Levin, you seem to be a super friendly dude, especially for the size of your channel. I like, I feel like some people get quite self indulged if they see. Um, I mean, honestly, I mean, I don't, yeah, I mean, my channel is small. Me, I'm not gonna be my worst critic, anyhow, right? I always tell my wife, like, she's like, oh, you know. Your channel's getting bigger. You should, you know, you should, I'm always looking for, well, let's go to the next level. You know, I need to, you know, want to do better and everything like that. So I look at my channel, you know, it's still small, but I'm always very happy with the amount of people that are here and watching. Because one person, hey, it doesn't matter if it's one or 20 or 100, a million. Hey, at least you got it, you know, I don't know. I just like it and I, I hate trying to explain it because sometimes I can't explain it. But I just, it doesn't matter how, how big the channel is. I, of course, I like it to be huge. But um, the smaller channels are more personable, you know, as far as that goes too. That way you can talk to more people and, uh, you know, you kind of build relationships with people as well. You know, like, hey, man, yeah, I appreciate you, you know, you know, talking to me on this one. I try to do that stuff. There are some times where it's like people will call me and like, hey, you know, 
I, you know, I'm trying to run a business too. So it, it's a little bit like I hate to tell people like, dude, if you're buying something, it's cool. But if you're going to talk to me, you, know, you bought it somewhere else and you just want help, you know, it's a little bit hard to do. Like it just feels like it's not to me. It doesn't feel right that they're doing that to me where you should be talking to the person that, you know, where you bought it from. That's the support. So that would be where I would like it. Hey, you bought something for me. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can help you out. Let me you know, take care of you on that one. And I try to still take care of people like on YouTube, of course, you guys aren't buying anything, let's say, but I'm giving you content and then you can respond off of it and say, hey, well, this is this. And, uh, you know, try to help you guys out with it as well. Sometimes a little bit too much detail and I'm like, ah, I can't go into all that. You just go ahead and Google it. I'm sure other people have done it. So that's why as the channel grows, opinions become bias and just human nature. Um, but here's the thing. I, everybody's biased on something, right? For the most part, there's a little bit to it. Uh, you know, like, oh, let's say, for instance, I'm going to tell you this is my car. I got a Honda, right? If people say, hey, what's your, what's your favorite car? I'm going to tell you it's a Honda. Why? Because it's been my best experience, right? Yeah, and I've had my mom, I tell my mom, like, why are you, get, why are you getting that Ford? I'm sorry, Ford. But, um, you know, some of it's like they had to put a lot of money into their truck. Oh, man, I haven't had my phone plugged in. <laughs> So it's my experience. It's the same thing with anybody else. When you're doing, anyway, when you're doing, if like let's say for instance this car here, you're like, hey man, this thing's you know it's great. You know I've had no problems with it. And you're like, well, you're really pushing this one too. Well, it's because of all my good experiences with it, right? Um, but someone else might say, hey, this thing's bad or whatever. So uh, you know, but it's brands. I'm not really brand loyal to anything. What can I say? I'm brand loyal to. I don't think so. I don't. I don't feel myself like, oh, I really, really like this brand. That's it. But if it's my Honda Civic, even if I like came across even more money, what am I going to buy? What would I buy? I'm probably going to buy a Civic Type R, honestly, because that's what I like. Uh, the Honda hasn't done me wrong, and I just kind of like them. But if maybe I had a different car company and say, oh, yeah, you know, I've had nothing but good experiences with this particular brand. Then I'd tell people, like, hey, this has been a good car for me. Maybe it might be good for you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, everybody's kind of biased, to I think, to a certain extent extent uh, I was that way with Android at one point in time I was like man you don't get an iPhone that thing you know can't do much with it you can you know you can't customize it or whatever eventually with iPhone why I just get more updates on my phone I don't have to worry about I used to root my phone and uh, you know I, I felt I could do more with the Android but then it's like the camera the camera is like my big focal point but cameras have gotten better on Android there's a lot to it but I just feel like Apple is a little bit more when it comes to updates. I'm looking focused on updates, security, updates, whatever. And uh, some people can say something different with Android, but I just feel like Android was giving you not so much the cleaner apps that were on the phone. I would get a lot of pop-ups on my phone at one point in time. This is old experience anyhow, but uh, it was fun. I liked the Android. Uh, I really wouldn't knock either one. I'd say, hey, teach your own, enjoy it. I'm just in a lot of different ecosystem at this point in time. So, but I like the I like their the camera, so that's what I look for. So yeah, that's that. Sorry, I got kind of got off on the whole thing there. That's what happens, man. When I, uh, I get sidetracked, it's like squirrel. As you but um, I have to go. Okay, man. Sorry, James. If you have to go, man. Appreciate you watching. I'm gonna bounce out of here too because uh, my voice is about gone. So yeah, man. This has been an awesome conversation. You got anybody that's been around for the very beginning of this stream or whatever like that, or jumped in anywhere in between. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully you can like, comment, subscribe. Check us out, omgrc.com. And yeah, you guys are awesome, man. I appreciate you guys just taking the time out of the day to say what's up. So and I'll have a video for you guys tomorrow. All right, so peace out. Thank you again.